The layout section is where you create your content that's going to be shown on your devices. To create a new layout, click Add New. Here we then configure all our layout settings. So first we can give it a name. We can add, add resolutions and orientations. Resolutions can be entered manually here, or they will be picked up automatically when you add the device. So we can add a resolution for things such as LED walls and devices that haven't been registered on your account. A single layout can support multiple resolutions and multiple orientations. You just simply select which ones you're after. Next is the template. Any layout that you create can be saved as a template to be used in the future. We'll go through how to do this in a later video. For now, we're going to select the blank template. Once we're happy, we save and continue to the builder. As the name suggests, this is where you build your layout. Layouts are built up of pages, which we have here. Pages are built up of zones, which we have here. And zones will hold your content through playlists and playlist items. Before we get onto zones and content, we first have to set up our page. The first setting we come to is the background. Here we can apply a background to all of the pages in our layout, or just to the current page that we're working on. So this can either be an image from our media library, or a colour using our colour selector. We can also select the opacity and change our colour. Once we're happy, we click apply. And as you can see, the background of our page has been changed. Next, we select which resolution and which orientation we design for. So here, we can select our resolution and our orientation. This will then give us the ability to optimize our layout for each resolution and each orientation. The next three options will help us when we're designing our content. The first option is the grid. The grid is made up of 50 by 50 pixel squares, which then add up to the resolution of our page. This will help us when we're repositioning our zones as it will snap when we hit the 50 pixel lines. So we can have this on or off. Next, we can zoom in and out of our page. And the next two options will hide and show our toolbars. Once we're happy with our page set up, we can then move on to the zones. Each page can have as many zones as you like. These zones will then hold your content. We can edit these by changing the settings on the right hand side. So first we can change its name. We can then change its dimension and position by either using the drag and drop functionality or by changing these settings here. We can then apply a background, so this again can either be an image from our media library or a colour using our colour selector. So again, we can change the color and the opacity. Borders and shadows can also be applied, as well as animations that will take effect when the page first loads. As mentioned before, a single layout can support multiple resolutions and multiple orientations. At any time, we can change which one we're designing for. We just have to change the settings at the top. So as you can see, we've gone into our portrait orientation and we can see our only zone. We can then reposition and resize. Oops. 
By default, our zone will always show. If we wanted to schedule our zone to show, we can add conditional play. We can then schedule our zone to show dependent on the time, days of the week, specific dates, or even down to the weather. This is where the location we've set on our device will come in. So for instance, if we wanted to only show our zone on a Monday between 9 a.m. and 10 a.m., we would select times and days, set it to play between 9 and 10. We would then only select Monday and save. As we can see down here, if we were to preview our layout now, this zone will not show. It's currently Friday afternoon, so the zone will not show as we haven't met these conditions. To make sure this is working, we can preview our layout. To do this, we click Save, and from the options here, we select Save and Preview. The other options we've got are Save and Exit to the Layouts page, Save and Continue Editing, or Save and Publish, which we'll come into later. For now, we want to Save and Preview. As you can see, our zone has not appeared because it hasn't met the conditions that we've set. To go back to the builder, we click continue editing. If we then remove the conditional play by unselecting these and saving, once again go to save and preview, we will see our zone showing. As you may have seen, we also have an autosave feature. This comes in handy if your computer will ever to crash or if you just forget to save. So I'm quickly going to add a new zone. Go to move it to the bottom of the page and quickly add a border. As we can see, our layout has been auto-saved. If we then cancel, and then re-enter the builder, we can either restore our layout to the auto-save, or we can ignore it to go back to when we last saved it. So if we ignore, we won't see our zone, but if we were to restore, we would see our zone show. The next options will come in handy if we are designing an interactive layout. They are interactivity and the visibility of the zone. So first, if we go to interactivity, we can add touch events. We simply select which touch event we want to use. We then can select an action and then a target. A target will either be a page, a zone, or a playlist item. Once you're happy, you just click save. Next, the visibility of the zone. We can either have it to hide or to show. Again, this will come in handy if you are designing an interactive layout, as if you had two zones and one of those was hidden, we could add a touch event on the one that we can see to once tapped show the hidden zone. I'm quickly going to create this now for you. So we add a new zone. Again we can drag it down to the bottom. Go to the design settings and add a border. Also add a black background. We then want to set this visibility to hidden, and if we select our first zone, we can add an interaction to once tapped, show zone, show zone 2. We save, and if we go to save and preview, as you can see we can't see our second zone. But if we tap on our first zone, that will show our second zone.
The next option is whether the zone is global or not. If we set it to be global, it will then appear on every additional page that we create within this layer. Next is whether the zone is locked or not. If we lock our zone, we will not be able to update any of its settings. If we want to edit it, we have to first unlock. We can then go through and edit its settings. There are then a few other options we can do with our zones. We can select all. As you've seen already, we can add zones. We can group zones together, which will give us the ability to edit multiple zones at once, duplicate zones, and delete zones. To duplicate a zone, we select the zone and duplicate. We then have our duplicated version of that zone with the same playlist and settings. We can then group these two zones together by selecting the zones and creating a group. By selecting our group, we can then move them around together and edit them. To delete a zone, all we have to do is select and delete. In some layouts, you may need zones to either overlap or sit on top of others. You can do this by reordering the zones on the left hand side here by dragging and dropping. So if we move the zone 2 to the top of the queue and then zone 2 on top of another zone, you will see that it will play over the top. If we then move zone 2 underneath the group, you will see the zone 2 is now underneath this zone here. Once our zone has been set up, we can now add the content. We do this by going into the zones playlist. A playlist can have as many playlist items as you want. You can select the playlist items from the top here. As you can see, we have a text playlist item in this zone already. So if we wanted to edit this, we can either click on the name here or on the pencil icon here. The settings we can edit are summarized here. So we can edit its timing, add conditional play, change its animation, add content triggers and interactions, as well as tags. First, we can change its general settings by changing its name, changing its timing, which is how long the playlist item will play for before it moves on to the next one. If we only have one playlist item in our playlist, it will just play continuously. Next, with a text playlist item, we can decide whether we want scrolling text. We can then decide on the speed. To change our text, we click Edit Text and Formatting. We then have to highlight our text to edit and add styling. Once we're done, click Save Changes. Here we can see our current text has changed. To edit the other options, we can either select them from here or from the top here. So if we wanted to add conditional play, we can select that from here and change our settings. Once again, conditional play only needs to be added if you want to schedule your content. Otherwise, it will just play by default. Next, if we wanted to change our animation, we can select that from the top here. The animation on the playlist item is how the playlist item will enter and leave the zone. To change the animation, we just select it from our drop down menu here. If we don't want an animation, we just select none. Next are the content triggers and the interactions. For this, we will need additional zones, so we will add those first and go through these after. You can also add tags the same way as we tagged our media. Once we're happy with our settings, we can then add additional playlist items. 
A playlist can be made up of a variety of the playlist items that you see at the top here. This playlist is going to consist of a piece of text and some media. To insert a piece of media, select media from the top. Here we can insert through our media library to find the files that we're after. So we can search by an order of either the upload date, A to Z or random. We can then search by the file name or the file type. So if we know we're looking for a video, we can unselect all the other options and it will show us all the videos inside our media library. We can also use tags to filter through. Tags can also be used for creating dynamic media items which we will cover in a later video. If we need to add another piece of media, we can do this here by simply dragging and dropping. To insert some media, you can select and insert, or you can drag and drop. As you can see, we now have a playlist. We have an image, a video, and a text playlist item. You can reorder these by dragging and dropping, and the playlist item at the top will play first. So as this is set up, the wolf image will play for 10 seconds. It will then move on to the text, which will play for five seconds. And then our video will play until it's finished. This will then go back to the wolf picture and play on a continuous loop. We can also randomize this order by selecting this button here. You can then edit the settings individually by clicking on them here to change or if you want to apply the same setting to multiple playlist items you can either select them or select all from the top. You can then change the setting so if we change the animation to a fade you'll see all the playlist items that have been selected now have the animation of fade. Once we're happy we can finish editing and save and preview. Our playlist will now play in a random order so our video will play until it's finished. It will then fade to our picture, which will play for five seconds. And fade to our text. I have added two new zones to show you content triggers and interactions. If we look inside the first zone, we will see it has two playlist items. A picture of a wolf and a picture of a frog. The timings have both been set to repeat, which means they won't move on to the next playlist item. They have both been told to stretch to the zone's dimensions and have an animation of fade. In the other zone, we have two text playlist items. They both play for 10 seconds and then slide on to the next one. The first text playlist item says show the wolf and the second one says show the frog. We're then going to add content triggers and interactions to both of these playlist items to show the relevant image in the other zone. First of all, we're going to add our content triggers. So we're going to add it to the wolf text first by selecting the wolf text and then content triggers. We now have two options. We can set our content trigger on when the playlist item starts or when this playlist item ends. For this one, we're going to do when it starts. So the action would be activate a specific playlist item, and our target would be zone five and the wolf picture. We then need to add a content trigger onto the frog text to do the same, but show the frog picture. Click finish editing and save and preview. So we will see the wolf text, which has told it to play the wolf picture. After 10 seconds, the text will move and say show the frog. And this will then start to show the frog image. Another way we can do this is by adding the content trigger to when the playlist item ends. So if we go back into our zone with the text, 
edit the content trigger. First, we have to remove this one and add it when the playlist item ends. So the action will still be the same, but this time the wolf text, once it's finished playing, we want it to show the frog image. Same with the frog text, we want that to show the wolf image. This is because once the wolf text has finished, it will move on to the frog text and we want the frog image to play with the frog text. So if we finish editing, save and preview, we will still get the same outcome. We can also add interactions to carry out the same command. So if we go back into the builder, back into our zone with the text, I'm going to remove the content triggers for now. We can then add our interactions. So we add new. So our touch event is when we tap our frog text we want it to activate a specific playlist item, zone 5, frog picture. So when someone presses on the frog text in our zone, it will show the frog picture in zone 5. We can then add this to the wolf text to show the wolf picture. Finish editing, save and preview. So after 10 seconds, our text will slide across and show the frog. If we click this, it will show our frog image. If we wait for the wolf text to come through and press on that, it will show the wolf picture. Each new zone will come with an empty playlist. To edit our zone, we can either click this button here or we'll double click on our zone. We've already seen how to insert, edit and format a text playlist item as well as insert a piece of media. To insert a playlist you have to first create one in the global playlist section of your account. We will do this in a later video. Next we come onto the widgets. As you can see we've set up a new layout called widgets and we have a single zone that we're going to add our time widget into. So to do this we go edit zones playlist and insert our widget. These widgets have all been pre-assigned to your account. We can then customize its settings. Once we're happy we can click edit and customize. Same as a text playlist item you have to highlight to edit and add styling. First option we can edit is whether to show a 24 hour clock or a 12 hour clock. We can then go through all its styling. Once we're happy, click save changes and finish editing. And there we have it, our time widget. The next widget we're going to go through is the date widget. We now have an empty zone, so if we edit the zones playlist, we can add our widget. The date will also come from the date that's set on our device. We can then edit and customize. The first option we can edit is the date format. This can be selected from the drop down menu here. We can then customise the day, month and year format by themselves.
if we want to, we can then add a separator to separate the day, month, and year. We can then highlight to edit. When we are customising our date, we have to take into consideration longer days and longer months. For instance, September will take up more space than May. Once we're happy, click Save Changes and finish editing. We are now going to add our weather widget. As you can see, we have two empty zones. We're going to add the weather widget into both of these. The top zone is going to show one day's weather and the bottom zone is going to show a week's forecast. So let's start with the top one. So we add our widget into our zone. We can then edit. The first setting we have to change is the location type. This can either be automatic or a city. If we select automatic, the weather will come from the location that we have set on our device. If we select city, we can then type in a city that we want the weather for. So we're going to get the weather for Paris. You then select how many number of days you want to show the weather for. So for our top zone, we want to show one. You then select the unit of degrees. Once we're happy, click customize. As you can see, we have one day's weather with an icon and a temperature. We can then decide on the style of the icon and what information is displayed. So let's start with the icon style. To change this, we can select one of these from the drop down menu. If we then only want to show the temperature, we can select where it's positioned. So it can be to the right, to the left, on top, or underneath. We can choose just to display the icon, or we can create a custom one ourselves. We can then choose as many of these fields as we like. For this one, I want to show an icon, a high temperature, and a summary. So first, if we start with the icon, we can select and then using our drag and drop, we can resize and reposition. We can then add additional fields by selecting. Once we're happy, click Save Changes and finish editing. To see the current weather, we can save and preview. That is now shown today's current weather from Paris. If we go back into the builder, we can add our week's forecast. So again, click our zone and add our widget.
We then select how many number of days we want to show the weather for. So we're going to show five days weather. Then customize to go into our widget. As you can see, it's now showing five days weather with an icon and a temperature for each day. What you won't see is that a zone has technically been split up into five smaller zones and each one of these zones will then show a day's weather. Again we can go through and change the icon style and the template. For this one I want to show an icon, the day title and the summary. So again let's start with the icon. Once selected you can resize and reposition it. When resizing you can see it will stop when it hits the end of the zone. So there we've hit the end of our zone. We can then reposition and add new fields. So we want to add in a day title and a summary. Once we're happy, click Save Changes and Finish Editing. We can then see this in action when we save and preview. As we can see, we have today's weather in this zone and then our week's forecast in this zone. The next widget we're going to add is the RSS feed or text scroller. So as you can see here, we've got an empty zone, which has been called RSS feed. If we go to edit zones playlist, we can add our widget. The first setting we come to is the type. So this will either be an RSS feed, or we can insert our own text items. So we're going to set this one up first. We then write in this box here the text that we want to show, with each new line being its own text item. We then select the number of items we want to show by changing this number here. So if we had more than 20 text items in this box here, this would only show the first 20. We can then add a character limit by changing this number here. If we don't want to add a character limit, we can leave it empty or set a zero. We then decide how long each item plays for by changing the time in seconds here. And then the style in which it enters and leaves our feed. If we select scroll across, we have a few more options to edit. The speed, whether there's a gap between the first and the last items, and the spacer between the title description. Once we've gone through all these, we can customize. As you can see at the bottom here, our first text item has shown in our zone. So we can highlight to change the style and edit. Once we're happy, we can click Save Changes and Finish Editing. To see our scroller in action, we can Save and Preview.
We can then change our type to an RSS feed and we can set this up as well. As you can see, we now have a feed URL. This one is pointing to BBC World News and this can be changed to any RSS feed. The number of items now comes into play as this will now just show the 20 latest news items from our feed. Again, we can add character limits and change the time that they play for, as well as the styles. Once we're happy, we can customize. As you can see, we now have an RSS feed in our zone. You'll also see we have two lines of news. So we have a title and a description. At the top here, we can decide which ones we want to show. So we can show both, just the description, or just the title. For this one, we're going to show just the title. Again, we need to highlight to edit. Once we're happy, click Save Changes and finish editing. Again, to see this in action, we can save and preview. We can then see our news feed scrolling along the bottom. Some devices also have the ability to show an external input using the source input widget and the source inputs on your screen. To find out which devices are compatible, you can go to our website. If your device is compatible, you can then show things such as TV channels from external inputs such as Freeview boxes or Apple TVs. If you want to use this widget, you simply insert it into your zone. and then select the input source. Once you're done, click Finish Editing. The next widget we're going to go through is the Twitter widget. So we're going to insert that into our zone here. We can then show a specific account's tweets by entering in their timeline here. Or we can show the latest tweets from a hashtag by searching for that hashtag here. We're going to show the latest tweets from our Embed Signage Twitter account. We can then decide how those tweets will enter our zone by sliding in or sliding up. We can then set a tweet limit, so this will show the latest 20 tweets from our Embed Signage account. We can then decide how long in seconds they will show for. Once we're happy, we can click Customize. So as you can see, we have our tweet, and then we have our time and date stamp. We can style these individually, but if we don't want to show our tweet stamp, we can just change the opacity of the color to zero. We can then highlight our tweet to style. Once we're happy, we can click Save Changes and finish editing. To see this in action, we can save and preview. If you're using a Windows device, you can also show live streams by using the IPTV widget. You simply insert the widget, and as long as your stream is one of these file types, the stream will work. You then enter the stream here and click Finish Editing.
We can also display most websites using the website widget depending on your device. For device recommendations on this widget you can go to our website. To insert the widget we can select it from here. We can then enter in our website URL but if we want to preview this in our layout first it will have to be a HTTPS website due to browser security restrictions so we're going to put in our embed signage website we can then change how often the website refreshes by changing the time in seconds here we can then edit the load width and the scale which will make the website larger and then crop it to fit our zone and we can also select part of the website to show by setting a left offset and a top offset. Once we're happy, we can click finish editing. We can then save and preview. As we have entered a HTTPS website, we can see it in our preview. If we then have an interactive screen, our users will be able to interact with our website. On the left hand side you can see we are currently editing our first page. Layouts can be made up of multiple pages. To see the overview of our pages you can click this button here. We can then add, duplicate and delete our pages. We would add pages if we had different content we wanted to separate. For instance, if we were designing digital menu boards, on our first page we could have our normal menus and then we can add a page for our special offers. We could then set these to play on a continuous loop or we could schedule them to show using conditional play. To add a new page, click this button here. As you can see, our newest page goes to the front of the queue which means this page will show first. To reorder these, simply drag and drop. If we wanted these pages to play on a continuous loop, we will have to change the timeout. So we have to first change the time, which is how long the page will show for, and then we can select the action. Here, we can either select show next page, or we can select show page and set our target. We we'll have to add these to both pages for it to work. If we wanted to schedule a page to show, we can add conditional play. To do this, we select a page, we've selected page 2, and then we add some conditional play. So we can schedule this page to show dependent on the time days of the week, specific dates, and even down to the weather. If we add conditional play, we have to make sure our time, dates, and location are set and correct on our device. For instance, if our page had a special offer for some ice cream, we can schedule this page to show dependent on the weather. To add this, we click weather, and then we insert our temperatures. So this page will only show when the temperature from our location on our device is between 20 degrees and 40 degrees Celsius. If the temperature is between these two, then our pages will both show on a continuous loop. They will both play for 15 seconds and move on to the next one. If the temperature is outside, either one of these temperatures, then we will only see our first page. Once we're done, we can see here our conditional play has been added. If no conditional play has been set, like our first page, it will show continuously. It will only move to page two after 15 seconds if this condition has been met. Otherwise, our first page will just play continuously. The other settings we can edit are at the top here. First of all we have to select the page and then the settings we want to edit. So here we can change its name and apply a timeout 
which we've already done. You can then add conditional play if you want to schedule your page to show. You will leave this blank if you want it to show continuously. Next we can add a background which can be an image from our media library or a colour using our colour selector. Next we can add an animation. This is how the page will enter and leave the layout. If we don't want an animation we click none. We can also add interactions and tags. Some pages may need the same settings. You can edit settings on multiple pages by selecting all. You then go to the setting you wish to edit and this will be saved on all the pages that have been selected. So for instance if we change the timeout to 20 seconds and simply do it to show next page. As you can see it's now changed on both pages. To view or edit a page you can click the eye icon here. This will then take you to the builder for that page. As you can see here, we are editing our second page. You can then choose between the pages by using the bar here. As you can see, on our second page, we haven't applied a background. We can do this by going to the background settings or setting the background from our overview of pages. So if we click this button here, select second page and background, and if we give it a black background. Once we close, you will see our second page now has a black background. As you can see at the top, we can also add pages from here we can also duplicate and delete our current page. To go back to the builder for the second page, we can select that from here. We can then start to build our second page. 